And go. Um, how do we talk to Mousy? Uh, I guess he might be in the museum. Maybe, I guess. Because, uh... Maybe place. he'll maybe he'll be at court and we can tell him the day. <laughs> yeah, the only place we saw him was at our office and he wasn't there. So, alternatively, we could try to play cards again. Eh. Yeah. Okay. Falcon and Sparrows would make their way to the place de Cas Carousel, the courtyard just north of the Louvre's Grand Gallery. That's the Arc de Triomphe over there, right? I swear it's smaller than how I remember it. That's the Arc de Triomphe du Carousel, you doofus. The big Arc de Triomphe is up the road. Well. What? No way. Why are there two? Because when a man like Napoleon invades half of Europe, he gets to build as many triumphal arches as he damn well pleases. <laughs> True. Oh, man. Cocorico. Uh... I guess I can be the chicken people. Right, go for it. <laughs> well, well, well. I never expected to see you here, JJ. Nice, nice, nice. That arrogant voice. Uh-oh. Ah, good day, Severin. Let's be civil, JJ. Why don't you introduce me to your new assistant? Fine. Severin, this is Sparrowson, my assistant. Sparrowson, this is Severin Cocorico. The most pompous prosecutor in Paris. Oh. Are you two old school friends or something? More like arch rivals. Please, JJ. I think arch rival implies some sort of competition. <laughs> As I recall, we've met in court on five occasions. And on five occasions, did you get humiliated terribly? <laughs> I am amazed a failing bird brain like you is still able to get clients. Oof. Actually, Severin, business has never been better. I'll have you know I am currently being employed by the Prince of Spain, no less. <laughs> Why are we still calling him that? <laughs> He's trying to one-up him. The Prince of Spain? Juan Gerardo? Well, well, this is quite an amusing coincidence. Don't tell me. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> I am the prosecutor for that very same case. Great. <laughs> It is a pity the Spanish prince will indubitably hang, but I suppose that is what he gets for hiring a bird braid to represent him. You also have a bird brain. Don't call me bird brain. You're the only bird brain here, Severin. <laughs> one always speaks badly when one has nothing to say, Voltaire. Uh-oh, he's giving you the verbal smackdown. Quick, Falcon, make a witty retort. Huh? Oh, yeah, uh... <laughs> I, don't I don't agree with what you say. <laughs> I don't agree with what you say. <laughs> um, a witty saying proves nothing. True. Voltaire. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very good, JJ. A worthy repost. Uh, fencing. He's as good a rapier. Uh, he does. <laughs> I thought that was a bow. <laughs> <laughs> But enough talk. If you messieurs would excuse me, I have a case to prep for. JJ, Sparrowson, I'll see you in court. I can't stand that guy. He did seem like a bit of a cockerel. <laughs> <laughs> but is it true what he said, you know, that he trounced you in court five times? I can't deny it. Severin has a reputation as a ruthlessly thorough prosecutor. Mountains of evidence, surprise witnesses, no wonder he always manages to one-up me. But this time will be different, right? I hope so. I know so, for you see. I stole this annotated map of the Louvre out of Cocorico's pocket <laughs> when he was busily rattling out full day quotes. <laughs> Sparrowson, that's... 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 pretty impressive? Yeah, impressive. Yeah. Pretty impressive, actually. I swear you were standing three meters away this whole time. <laughs> you tall birds are so busy with your heads in the clouds that you never notice those small folk running around your feet. Ugh. Same. <laughs> Pinching Cocorico's pocket was like taking candy from a very tall baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a closer look. I see. This map shows the entire Louvre area. 
everything from Tuileries to the Rue de Louvre, most convenient. We're currently standing here in the Palace du Carousel. And those pinned-in arrows seem to show the route taken by the king's entourage, which means the king first went here, through the Salle du Tiber, and then here, into the Grand Gallery, where the murder occurred. Didn't Prince Juan say that he spent the morning in the Tuileries Gardens? That's right. So that means Prince Juan approached the Louvre from the west side somewhere over here. Sounds like we have a lot of places to visit. Where should we go first? Mm. Uh. Just start where. Yeah. 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 Where he was. Yeah. Our feather-headed friends wander through the immaculately maintained Tuileries Gardens. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing seems out of the ordinary until they spot a familiar face picking up litter by a tree line. Community service bird. <laughs> yeah. Hey Falcon, doesn't that groundskeeper over there look familiar? Yeah, now that I'm looking at him, he does look a lot like that photographer. What's his name? Bono Baghetto. <laughs> Salador Serenado. <coughs> Rubidio Rubino. Rubino. Duh. Duh. I say, I already said it. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> did someone call me? Oh, it's you. The lawyers who didn't appreciate masterful photograph when they see it. It's good to see that you gave up on your artsy dreams to pursue a more grounded career of groundskeeping. Hey, I'm not doing this willingly. I was given community service for committing perjury. Can you believe that? They gave me an esteemed photographer. Community service. Me. Yeah, I can believe that. Perjury is somewhat serious of a crime. You should be thankful you got off without jail. <laughs> you sound just like that self-righteous judge, Maxime. So, did you two want to ask me something, or are you just here to gulp? Personally, I'm just gulping. <laughs> Actually, I do have a couple of questions, if you don't mind, Monsieur Rivino. Hmm. Have you met a Prince Juan? I don't suppose you've bumped into a Spanish fox who goes by the name of Prince Juan, have you? A Spanish fox? No. I've never met anyone like that. Have you met a regular fox? <laughs> <laughs> if this is about the assassination attempt on the king, then you're asking the wrong person. I only started working here today. I see. Was there anything else you wanted? How's the groundskeeping? How's that new groundskeeping job working out? Terrible. Tourists are pigs. Sometimes literally. <laughs> Look at all this rubbish I found. Beer bottles, tin cans, apple corns. And look what I picked up by this west entrance. A book page. A whole book I could understand, but a single page? What kind of blithering moron loses just one page? Wait a minute. May I take a closer look at that, Monsieur? Don Quixote. That's a page from Don Quixote. Aha. May I take it off of your hands, Monsieur? Sure. What's it worth to you? What's it worth? It's trash. It's literally worthless. Then I suppose I'll be destroying it as per my duties. Alright, alright. I suppose you deserve a little compensation for your trouble. How about you give me the page and... Hmm. 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 Probably this, because he's so, like, you know, big-headed. Well... He'll probably scoff at five francs, and I don't know if this will really do anything. Um... I mean... I... I, I think that money is always worth the trade, <laughs> to yeah. be honest, especially if he's had his job affected by his community service. Or by appearing in court and having to admit that he was altering photos. That probably altered his job. Yeah. As a photographer, people probably take him a little bit less seriously. I don't know. 
I feel like as attorneys, talking with the judge would be one thing that we probably could do the most. Yeah. But it did say he was very strict and stuff, so... Well, it didn't say, like, he rules with an iron fist. It just said that... You know what I mean? I suppose. Which one? Uh... I mean, I'd say I'll speak with the judge. Personally. I'll speak with Judge Maxime. I'll put in a good word and might be able to get your sentence reduced. Really? You'll do that for me? Thank you, Monsieur. I would really appreciate that. Yeah, take the page. Good call. Yeah. Page 44 of El Ingenioso Hidalgo Don Quixote de la Mancha has been added to your evidence folder. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to ask something else? That's all. Thank you. That's all. We'll let you get back to your work, Monsieur Robinho. Bye. Bye. Uh -huh. Robin man. Dang, we're already at 36 minutes. So, hit X. X. Oh, yeah. Look at that page. Page 44 of Don Quixote was found in Toulouse Guard by the Louvre's West Entrance. Hmm. That confirms his position, I guess. I guess. Unless he ripped it out himself and placed it there on purpose. I suppose. Uh. I guess we can go to the other places. Let's go to this. No. That's oh. where we oh, started. Okay. Are we all done investigating the Louvre? No. Nope. Pass me that map. Uh, yeah. Sal du Tiber. Start where they were. So <laughs> this is the Sal du Tiber. If I understand Cocorico's notes correctly, this is the room the king and his entourage stopped in before heading to the Grand Gallery. This room doesn't seem to be very popular. I don't see anyone around to interrogate. Interview. Right. Interview. <laughs> well, since it's quiet, maybe we should take the opportunity to do a little snooping. What's the point? Surely all the interesting evidence would be in the Grand Gallery where the murder took place. Think about it, Falcon. The police would have already gone to the Grand Gallery with a fine-toothed comb. But I bet that numbskull Inspector Volerti didn't even think to check this room for clues. There might be a murder weapon just under our beaks. Your logic seems questionable, but it couldn't hurt to have a look, I suppose. Oh, time to investigate. A shiny copper urn. I guess it was used for carrying water, or for cremated remains. Probably not both at the same time. <laughs> it smells good. Don't sniff the exhibits, Harrison. <laughs> no, really. This urn smells amazing. It's almost chocolatey. You poor thing. You're hallucinating from hunger. Would you like to stop by a bakery on our way back to the office? Don't patronize me, Falcon. My nose never lies. I'm telling you, there's something in here. I can feel it. Now you're touching the exhibit? That's definitely a no-no. See? Look what I found in the urn. Put that down, Sparrowson. It's someone's old rubbish. No, look. It's a chocolate wrapper. Judging by the smell, the chocolate was bitter and dark. Seventy, perhaps eighty percent cocoa. <gasps> Belgian in origin. No! What? Dogs can't eat chocolate. Whoa. It can kill them. He poisoned the rose with chocolate? No. Oh. The dog might have eaten a chocolate bar. And just died. And just died. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I've had a dog before. Keisha, our old Rottweiler. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an ice cream bar that dripped chocolate onto the floor. And she licked it before I even noticed that it was on the floor. And then within a few minutes, she was foaming at the mouth and having a seizure. Mm-hmm. I see. And she's a big dog. Interesting. Like, dogs are really sensitive to chocolate. The level of wrapper crumpling and the firmness of the chocolate residue indicate that this was discarded just a few days ago. Yes, I am certain. The chocolate contained in this wrapper was undoubtedly consumed on the 7th of January, the day of the murder. Mind you, Asparison. You deduced all that from smelling the wrapper. Imagine what I could work out if I tasted it. 
<laughs> that won't be necessary. <laughs> Sparrowson, if you could apply this level of critical thinking to areas outside of food, you would be the world's <laughs> greatest detective. <laughs> if only all evidence were edible. Uh, hashtag relatable. Yeah. Do you have any idea which shop this chocolate was purchased from? That may help us track down the person who consumed it. No, there's no possible way we could know that. I suppose we will just have to visit every confectioner in town and sample every bit of merchandise from <laughs> comparison. <laughs> what a chore. Interesting, because I can see Lander Hagelsack's chocolate emporium written on this wrapper. <laughs> Lander Hagelsack's? Jeez. <laughs> well, you can't blame a bird for trying. <laughs> trying to snack. <laughs> Chocolate wrapper. A chocolate wrapper that was found in the South du Tiber. The label reads, yeah. Okie doke. It's in this. I'm not sure what this is. Some sort of stand or podium? Maybe it's just a decorative piece. It's a Roman doorstop. Roman doors were enormous marble slabs, so the doorstops had to be similarly r large in order to stay in place. Large? Large. I don't think that's right. My uncle's a Roman historian, trust me. Huh. Hmm. These columns have been designed to look Roman. I think the style is iconic. It's not ionic. Ionic. <laughs> it's not ionic, Falcon. Iony is when a character says something, but the reader knows it means something <laughs> completely different. <laughs> See, I overcorrected because I thought it was a misspelling. <laughs> That's not... never mind. <laughs> well... <laughs> This. I see a cabinet full of engraved plates, mostly bronze. How much do you think they're worth? Uh, one bronze? <laughs> I don't know. 300 francs a piece, at least. <gasps> what? Are you serious? I'm in the wrong profession. I don't think archaeology works as a get-rich-quick scheme, Sparrowson. Who said anything about archaeology? I'm going to become a museum robber. <laughs> Oh, well, that's one way to get rich quick. <laughs> Click. Click. This is some sort of ceremonial container. It's beautifully crafted, but what did it contain? Maybe it's an arcane wine cabinet? Don't be so ignorant, Falcon. This is a sacred Mesopotamian artifact, gifted to Emperor Hadrian for his victory at Euphrates in 123 AD. <laughs> Stop making stuff up. You and I both know nothing about Mesopotamia. All right, all right, you got me. This could be a hippo's chamber pot for all I know. <laughs> Gross. Anything else? Hippo shit. Uh, uh. Is there any? Hey, there's some. A supporting column. It's holding the roof up. If the column were truly supportive, it wouldn't hold the roof up. It would encourage the roof to get it to its location on time. Huh. <laughs> <sighs> terrible. Simply terrible. Anything else? I think that about does yeah, it. Uh, I don't see anything else. Is a thing. No. Okay. Looks good. Alrighty. B for back. <laughs> We're done here. For now, at least. We can't spend all day staring at Roman artifacts, I suppose. So where to next? The gallery. Yeah. Hopefully this will end this day. Yeah. Here we are. The grand gallery. The murder room. <gasps> Porcupine. Ooh. I believe the murder occurred right under the new painting. I see hundreds of paintings. Which one is the new one? I haven't the foggiest. We will have to ask someone. Eric Pork. Please don't talk to me. Please don't talk to me. Excuse me, Monsieur. You look like you know your Mona Lisa's from your last suppers. I don't want any attention. Maybe he isn't talking to me. No, he's definitely talking to me. Keep it together, Eric. Uh, oh, uh, hi. Would you happen to know which painting was unveiled on the 7th of January? The one the king came to visit? Oh, yeah. I can help you with that. It's the piece right behind you. Look out behind you. <laughs> that piece. Night trip. I see. It's a painting of the king himself. That's one noble-looking penguin. <laughs> what do you think of it, Falcon? Well, it's no emperor. <laughs> <laughs> what do I think? I'm no art critic, but... It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. 
subtle and nuanced. Indeed. The careful brush strokes, the pre-Raphaelite soft tones, and the subliminal use of light. This is contrasted, nuanced work. It's an evocative painting that alludes to a forgotten era. You said a lot of words, but I'm not sure if I'm in any closer to knowing your opinion. I'm getting the impression that you messieurs aren't regulars at art galleries. No, we're a right pair of Philistines. Speak for yourself, Falcon. I've never even been to the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm guessing you're here to investigate the King's assassination attempt. That's right. We were actually hoping we could ask you a couple questions about what you saw. Oh, I wasn't even in Paris when the murder took place. I didn't see anything. But, uh, I have a friend who might be able to help you out. What's this? R&M Associates, the home of Renard Volpes, private investigator? Mm. Thank you, but I don't normally deal with these gray area of the law types. No, please give the guy a chance. He helped me out of a bind before, and I'm sure he can do the same for you. Well, I'm not making promises, but I'll keep hold of the card. We appreciate your help in any case. It's no trouble. R&M's business card has been added to your evidence folder. Thank you for your time, Monsieur. Is there anything else we can do here? Ideally, we would turn the whole Grand Gallery upside down in our hunt for evidence. But that's not possible with so many around. We should probably just move to another room. Hang on a second. Vulpus. That means rat, doesn't it? Fox. Fox? Do you think it's him? Vulpus? Mm -hmm. That means fox? Yeah, I think it's like uh, Latin for vulpine. Which is related oh, to yeah, foxes, like, I think. Like vulpix. Yeah. Yeah. The... Vulpix. <laughs> <laughs> Vulpis. <laughs> Vulpis. Like the prince? Him? Yeah. Uh, probably not, since in order to call him to ask him for help, he'd be in jail. Call who? Prince Juan. Maybe he's undercover. If, if that were him on the card? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Although, in that one cutscene, we did see a bunch of them. And they were being all snarly faced with each other. So. I think those were wolves, though, weren't they? No. Oh? They had long, skinny snoots. I thought they were rats. Because they looked very like. Because, like. They were the ones where I was like, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, the act is called a fox among wolves. Yeah, but the king's men are dogs. Maybe those weren't king's men? I don't know. Chill. <laughs> Are we all done investigating the Louvre? Yep, let's call it a day. Let's make a move. Let's make a move. Good call. We can always come back later if we've forgotten something. Can we? Can we? only we? have a few days. A new day. A new... Okay, cutting it there. Yeah, we're cutting it there. That's a long one. Yeah. That's what she said. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay.